Grade 7 Math, number 13.1a, Calculate Theoretical Probability of Simple Events. All right, I'm going to do this again. A trial is each observation of an experiment. The outcome is the result of the trial. An event is a set of one or more outcomes. Probability, that's the likelihood that the event will even happen. A sample space is the set of all the possible outcomes of an event. So for flipping a coin, it would be heads or tails. Those are the only two choices. That's our sample space. A complement, that's all the outcomes that are not included in the event. It's all the ways the event cannot happen. A simple event, well, that's when there's only one outcome for an event, like if we're trying to get heads and we toss a coin to get heads. A simulation is a model of an experiment that would be difficult to actually do. And a compound event is an event that includes two or more simple events. They can be dependent or independent of each other. Like in our previous video when we did flavors of ice cream versus a cone or a cup. Now, in my previous videos, we found probabilities based on experiments and observing data. Now we're going to find probability based on theories. Theoretical probability is the ratio, fraction, of the number of ways an event can happen compared to the total number of equally likely outcomes. While experimental probability will change based on the experiment, theoretical probability is fixed. So the fraction would be P event, that's the probability of the event happening, is the number of ways an event can happen over the total of equally likely outcomes. That's theoretical. This can be written as a fraction, decimal, or percent like we did in the experimental probability. The P and then this little swirly line and then the word event means the probability of it not happening. Okay? That's the probability of not having the event. So remember, this little tilde, this little swirl mark right here, this little curve is not in math logic. Okay? So it's the complement. It's the way it can't happen. Now, if you're lost or confused right now and these words are way past you, you need to go back to uh, see the playlist and videos in Grade 6 Math. See number 8.2 and 8.3. This explains theory theoretical probability, and this one compares theoretical probability to experimental probability. That'll explain a lot more, and then you can come back and watch this one, and maybe it'll make a little more sense. Now, a bag contains eight orange candies and 16 purple candies, so we pick one random candy from the bag. What's the probability that we pick an orange one? We find the ways the event can happen. Eight, there's eight pieces of orange candy. So, we add to find the total of equally likely outcomes. So there's eight orange ones, there's 16 purple ones, so the total number of candies is 24. There's 24 possible outcomes in the sample space. We find the probability of picking an orange candy. P, orange candy, means probability of getting an orange candy. It's the number of orange candies over the total number of candy. There's eight orange candies out of 24. That's one-third, so it's approximately 0.33 or approximately 33%. Now, we don't have a bag of candy, and we didn't pick any candy from a bag as an experiment to see what the outcome would be. We found theoretically what would happen if we did have candy in a bag. So that's theoretical probability. It would have been experimental probability if we actually had the bag of candy and actually tried taking them out to see what would happen and kept tally marks of our picks, see? So it ended up being 33% chance of getting an orange candy. So on our number line here from impossible zero to certain one, it falls about a third of the way, see? So Bernoulli's theorem, that's named after Jacob Bernoulli, he spent 20 years working to develop a proof he named the Golden Theorem, or his Golden Theorem, and it became more widely known as Bernoulli's Theorem, and you're going to hear about this in the future. It's the law of large numbers. It says if we perform the same experiment a large number of times, the outcome should be close to the expected result. The more trials performed, the closer it'll become. So, it pretty much says in the long run, the averages of random events will be correct and if there's a large number of trials. The experimental probability will begin to match the theoretical probability. What this is saying is, according to this, our theoretical probability, because we don't have a bag of candy, we're just guessing theoretically what will happen. If I did get a bag of candy, and we did a 
a lot of trials, like a large number, like 500 or 1,000, it would end up becoming one-third of the time we would get eight candies. Now, if we did it actually and we tried doing it 10 times, we might not get eight candies. See? We may not get it a third of the time. But according to Bernoulli's theorem, if we did it like 500 or 1,000 times, it would end up coming out to be a third. Okay? That's, that's all it says. All right. In our next unit, this is calculating theoretical. In our next unit, we're going to compare theoretical and experimental probability, just like we did back in 8.3. So I hope to see you there, and I hope I'm making some sense. I know this can be confusing. So the hardest part, I would say, is learning these definitions. Once you know these definitions and you understand what they mean, all of this is going to start making sense. And it does take a little common sense, but you'll be okay. Just learn what these words mean and watch my videos for uh, Unit 12. And now we're in 13, and hopefully that'll help, okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.